Good morning and uh, welcome to the Eightfold webinar for virtual event recruiting. We are very excited to, uh, to have you here this morning. I uh, will spend just a couple of minutes waiting for some other folks to get on the line and, um, and then we can go ahead and start, um, start the presentation then. Good morning, Tracy, how are you? Good morning, I'm great, I'm great. How are Good. you? <laughs> Doing all right, hanging in there. Good, good. Third or fourth cup of coffee, I think. Yeah, I'm not done with my first, so hopefully that works. <laughs> <laughs> Great, well, you know, I think we're a minute in. Uh, folks will filter on, I'm sure. Uh, let's go ahead and get started because I think we have a robust, um, uh, a robust agenda to get through here today. Uh, first and foremost, I wanna thank um, those of you who are on the, uh, on the line and joining us today. We know you have a lot of competing priorities um, and truly appreciate you taking the time uh, to be here with us. We at Eightfold hope that you and your loved ones are doing well, that you're safe, uh, healthy, uh, you're finding silver linings in the current environment. My name is Mihir Gandhi. I'm the Vice President of Strategic Marketing here at Eightfold. Uh, by way of background, uh, I've been here for a few years. I stood up our post-sales apparatus. Um, prior to this, I was at Lyft. Um, I was our first general manager uh, and the GM for Northern California for the few years before that and spent a lot of time in the healthcare economy prior to that. Um, I'm here with my family. Uh, I hope you are, are with yours. Um, so please bear with us if you see a three-year-old in a Spider-Man outfit uh, pop onto the screen or, um, or hear a one-year-old in the background um, or, or any dogs. Uh, certainly, I think we're all working through this together. Um, also, bear with us for some technical glitches. Um, just a quick heads up. Quinn Adler, who is our senior solutions engineer, um, is trying to get his microphone to work um, for our demo. And so we will uh, be playing that in real time um, as we get to it. Um, but you know, as we, as we think about why we are here this morning, uh, I think it's important to understand um, uh, the why, right? Uh, our mission here at Eightfold is to help find the right career for everyone in the world. And given our current environment and situation, I speak for the entire company when I say we're more energized than ever to do that. Uh, in times like these, it is our deep belief that determined and talented talent acquisition leaders uh, are gonna be the key to the, and the path forward. But only if, if y'all are equipped with the best tools in the world, um, then I think together we can all achieve that goal. Now, I think we probably all know friends and family who've lost jobs um, or been impacted in some way or the other about, with, with the current environment. Uh, one of my colleagues shared a story recently about his brother um, who lives just outside Philadelphia. His brother, Eric, uh, is an executive chef uh, near an airport and, and does fine dining. And I wanna let that sink in for just a moment. Right? People are not going out to eat, um, let alone fine dining. Uh, and certainly airport traffic has come to a bit of a crawl. So not only is Eric suffering, but now he has to make probably a lot of hard decisions about his staff, about servers, busboys, cooks, many of whom work two to three jobs just to get ahead. Uh, and now they're a bit lost, you know, forget getting ahead. They're in survival mode. Uh, my, my neighbor across the street is a senior, uh, is a senior in college. And, uh, you know, we're talking about what does post-college prospects look like? Uh, so on the educational side, there's a massive impact. There's a whole slew of folks who are never going to get a chance to apply to colleges, to attend campus events, to have um, some of those traditional experiences, high school seniors, college seniors, grad students, folks who've worked their tails off to get to where they are today. And now we're facing the prospect of moving off campus, finding new housing, paying down student debt. They put countless hours into trying to figure out uh, how they'll start their careers. And now they're in a place where they're not looking to start their careers, they're just looking to find a job. And, you know, as we think about, um, as we think about on our end, what we can do to help them, we certainly have not just the desire, but frankly, the imperative to do so. Um, you know, on the employer side, for several of you who are involved here, if you're not hiring right now, you will be hiring soon or in the near future. Uh, and you will have a need to bring in young talent and groom and develop that talent for the future health of your business. And as we think about the conventional modalities of outreach, um, they're just not gonna cut it. And for the foreseeable future, shake hands, uh, hand out business cards, host dinners, 
uh, or execute our event strategies in the ways that we historically have. We have to find different ways to engage our talent brand uh, or to deploy our talent brand and engage candidates um, for today and for tomorrow. And so, you know, I think it's time for us to rethink and solve for the problem of today and create a solution for the problem of tomorrow. Now, this is why we're building eightfold virtual event recruiting. They say necessity is the mother of reinvention and these necessities will allow us to innovate and actually find out uh, that we've been doing it probably wrong uh, all along. So, you know, I'm here today with Quinn Adler and Tracy Flynn. I want to give a quick introduction um, on both of them so that we have a, um, you know, you have a sense of who we're talking to and, and, um, and what we're, uh, and who's going to be on the screen. So Tracy, um, thank you for joining us again. Uh, Tracy joined Eightfold.ai last fall. Uh, she's a global HR veteran, nearly a decade at Visa. She was a member of Visa's leadership team uh, on the HR side. She held roles including the global head of talent acquisition, uh, the vice president of diversity and executive recruiting. Uh, I think she managed HR globally for, for, for some period of time. But we are so thrilled and frankly lucky to have Tracy, your leadership as our VP of people. Um, you, of course, you oversee all aspects of our uh, global people operations um, and your leadership and mentorship through the past few weeks has been um, nothing short of, of inspirational, let alone, um, uh, you know, stabilizing for the entire organization. Uh, you're a graduate of uh, University of California, Berkeley. Go Bears. Go Bears. <laughs> um, and, uh, and thank you for spending time with us. Uh, Quinn Adler, who, uh, who will also be hopefully joining us shortly, um, joined Eightfold last spring. Uh, as a senior member of the solutions engineering team. Uh, he's been in technical consulting for over six years. He's very specifically been focused on ML and AI, so machine learning and artificial intelligence. He went to Santa Clara University, uh, wanted me to plug the Broncos, uh, and graduated with, uh, with a degree in mechanical engineering. Um, as you will probably get a sense, and for those of you who had a chance to meet Quinn, uh, you know the mechanical engineering or just one challenge is never enough. He actually triple majored. <laughs> He added computer science and applied mathematics um, because uh, because he's Quinn. He grew up in the PAC Northwest. Uh, we, I think a lot of folks at the, at the uh, company have tried, uh, but still he's a diehard Seahawks fan. We will try and try more uh, <laughs> to bring him to the right side. So um, let's flip over a little bit to talk about virtual event recruiting. Um, you know, our mission uh, here permeates all that we do. I'll give a quick overview of what we do at Eightfold and Quinn will talk more about that. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Eightfold, we deliver a talent intelligence platform. Um, we believe it's the most effective way for companies to identify promising candidates, uh, to reach hiring uh, and diversity goals, uh, retain top performers, and ultimately engage talent and build talent networks for the future. Uh, we deploy a patented artificial intelligence-based platform. It empowers enterprises to turn talent management into competitive advantage, to be proactive with talent engagement, um, and, uh, and we're excited to show you a bit of what we have built um, in a very short turnaround time here with, um, with uh, event recruiting, or virtual event recruiting. But I'd like to, to spend some, um, some time talking a little bit about uh, virtual event recruiting, give you a flavor of what's to come, and then we can dive into some, um, some conversation with Tracy and, and better understand the context around this. You know, with Eightfold Virtual Event Recruiting, what we have designed the, the capability to do is continue all of your current current event recruiting and turn your resume books into qualified pipeline using our technology and our AI um, and your skills and your operations. So there's four things I want you to take away from the demo later. Uh, the first is never scroll through resume books again. Uh, I think um, we, those of us who've done campus recruiting have, uh, have spent uh, the hours and hours of uh, the uh, scrolling through resume books or flipping through resume books back uh, when I started doing uh, any kind of campus recruiting. Um, our platform will instantly analyze a resume book, identify high quality matches for your high, high priority recs, uh, and frankly, just elevate your uh, recruiter and hiring manager time to be spent with candidates rather than, um, you know, nose on, a, on a, a resume book. The second thing is that you can now recruit everywhere. Uh, you will have access to an engaged talent in places that you can't historically visit. Um, a couple of the clients who we've been working on this product with have now been able to recruit at campuses where they know there is talent, they just don't have the bandwidth or the resources uh, to go visit UT Austin or NC State. 
Um, so recruiting everywhere and really broadening the horizon of, of what your recruitment strategy looks like, it will be a core capability that you will unlock with virtual event recruiting. The third is being able to personalize interactions at scale uh, with quality applicants, right? And I think um, there's a way to deliver a bespoke relationship um, and be true to, to that integrity while also um, doing that at scale. And so through the platform, what Quinn will, will demo a little bit later is the ability to effectively engage high quality applicants with personalized messaging and content, um, improving candidate experience, improving your corporate brand and making sure that you stay relevant um, to the right candidates at the right time. And that fourth piece then is never losing touch with your candidates. I think uh, we've all spent time going to campuses. Of course, the number one goal typically is to hire. Um, and you meet a ton of really great candidates who frankly you lose touch with uh, very quickly, let alone longitudinally. Uh, and so we will show you how you can build your talent network, not just for the open recs of today, but also um, to build your talent pipeline for your jobs of tomorrow. So we, we're excited to show you the capabilities on that. Um, but I also want to spend some time with Tracy this morning. Uh, Tracy, thank you for taking the time. Uh, I know you are, uh, your, your, your schedule is crazier than a dog in a hot <laughs> factory these days. I mean, uh, I can't even imagine what, uh, what you're going through. And, and, and thank you again for your leadership. Um, I would love to spend some time understanding, you know, some of your um, some of your experiences at Visa uh, with event recruiting, and then just your thought leadership on on event recruiting. And so, um, maybe we could just kick it off. If you could uh, give us a sense of of your experience, and, and we'll dive into some of the impact of event recruiting at Visa. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Mahir, and uh, thank you, everybody. I hope you're all well, and uh, I know that this is a unique time and I really appreciate you all coming and joining us for this hour to, to learn more about it. But um, I guess that, you know, at Visa over the years there, when I think about event recruiting specifically, it was an evolution. Uh, when I joined the, the um, you know, Visa was very minimally involved in event recruiting. The impact was very low and the cost actually, the ROI was horrible. Uh, when we sat back and looked at the number of people that we actually recruited for the money that we spent, it was it was not viable. Um, and as we began to focus, the um, we really it started coming into kind of segments. University recruiting clearly was a key part of it. Um, diversity yeah. and inclusion was a uh, a big part of it as well. Yeah. And then we um, we can hear you, Quinn. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Sorry about that. Keep going. Keep going. Um, and then um, it evolved into uh, customer support type of, of functionality that we we call center hiring events. Um, we did um, also internal events, uh, being able to offer the employees of Visa the opportunity to come together and really think through how can I explore other options at Visa because it was growing and, and becoming a big company. But, um, you know, the resources were significant in terms of the, the dollars that we spent, uh, the people, the time, and there was a ton of advanced planning that went into it and input from a number of different organ parts of the organization. So, you know, when I started at Visa, I would say that we hired maybe Oh, a couple dozen people, literally. Um, it was right after they went public. And so they were coming out as a brand, more as a, a unique brand, uh, even though everybody had known them for years and years. But then by the time I left, I think that we were hiring over 750 people annually uh, through hiring events, if you might. So the impact was huge. Impact was huge. That, that's, um, that's incredible. You know, you talked uh, early in that answer around um, the challenges, or you began to sort of prelude the challenges with the event recruiting. It sounds like you know there's an ROI component, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a resource component. Can you talk a little bit about what some of those challenges were, and and then you know we'll maybe save a part of the conversation for how you overcame some of those challenges. Right. So, I mean, if you think about it, there event recruiting is is divided up into two segments. One is all of planning and the effort and energy that goes into uh, preparing for the event. And when it's a physical on-site event, you're including marketing with your booth and your, your tchotchkes that you're gonna give away, your messaging, what are the roles, you're, in, you're figuring out what is my budget, where can I actually go? 
how much money do I have and where am I going to apply that to get the biggest impact for the company? Um, big, big issues that you're dealing with. And then you're trying to figure out how can I afford to send hiring managers, build a great booth, sell the brand, do whatever you need to do. So a massive amount of coordination going on up front. And anybody who has ever done this um, really knows that. And then you get to the event and it's the coordination of the recruiters. It's the coordination of the booth getting set up, the last minute hiccups. Are the hiring managers there? Are they ready? Are they on point? Um, and, you know, they can, they, recruiting events in person are a marathon. I mean, they really are. They're, 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 I mean, the team at the end, all you want to do is, you know, high five and cocktails are, are basically what happens at the end of it. But then, um, you know, when I think about the events um, that I've been at, you know, the thing that strikes me is that I lose track of the the talent that are the reason we're there, to be honest with you. I mean, I remember being at the event and I, I mean, think about it. All of you probably, or many of you on this call have been at an event. Your the booth, the doors open, people jump in, your booth starts piping up. You're selling the company. You're grabbing a resume, looking at somebody's profile, whether it's through LinkedIn or whether it's a, a handwritten resume. You're also trying to engage with them and talk with them. And so you're trying to assess their background, literally amidst all of this stuff going on. And there are people that you you connect with and you go, wow, this person is absolutely phenomenal. But in, in that literally four minute that I remember I would just put stars on people's resumes and and then I put them away. And it was it was a very, very arcane way of doing it. And so, you know, it was it was something that really um kind of struck me when I started working with Mahir and in, in Eightfold on this virtual event recruiting and applying that with the Eightfold platform because it gives you the opportunity to actually take in all of this information about the individuals and then sort it and lift it and, and give you that intelligence about the, the people that really are stars and that, that you need to follow through with. You know, the um, I think it's no surprise to anyone that preparation just breeds success. And, you know, as you talk about this, the resources that go into preparing for a moment uh, is quite distracting. You have the preparation for the booth, for the logistics, um, the yeah. preparation for the hiring managers, the coordination. And then, of course, you know, the main reason we're all there is and the students wait in line oftentimes is to spend the three minutes or four minutes trying to get their pitch across. Um, and you've got all these other competing priorities. You know, I think, um, you know, as you as you describe and lay that out really, you know, frankly, succinctly and concisely, I, I'd love to hear how you overcame some of those with Visa and describe the potential. I mean, uh, it sounds like you started to realize some of the potential out of event recruiting, um, but uh, would love to maybe prelude a little bit into, into the demo that Quinn will give us, uh, yeah. but describe the potential of what you saw. Well, um, the potential in my brain, in my mind was there's several different layers of it, but at, at a high level, I think we came away with the fact that um, as a big named consumer brand, Visa, not only was looking for talent, and as we engaged people and brought them through the process, we realized these people were customers as well. They all had a Visa, or many of them, I would say, had a Visa in their their um, possession. And so some people actually came up and asked us about getting qualified for a visa card, which we were happy to say that wasn't our job. But it, really, I think that the it, it's a big brand moment when you think about it. And every company, when you show up at a, a recruiting event, it's about your brand and, and selling them on the, the vision of the company, the, the, you know, what is your, what are you trying to do in the world? And, um, so it's not just about the f future potential of employees that you might be coming across, but it's also the, the future of the brand and, and being a good brand ambassador. So it's integrated messaging, that type of thing. Um, the potential for me was that we, we got the opportunity to really get introduced to some amazing talent. And because we also layered a lot of diversity and inclusion in this, it, 
these events had a meaningful impact on creating a much more diverse population of visa employees um, out the gate. I mean, just straight out, whether it's Grace Hopper, whether it's, um, you know, Nesby, whether it's um, women in technology, uh, whether it was a veterans recruiting event, whether it was, um, it, you name it. We, it just, it became a, um, a way to incorporate a lot of different um, ideas, whether it was our branding and some of the things that we were doing in that aspect, whether it was just upskilling our technical talent, which we were very focused on, whether it was diversity and inclusion market, it, it became um, all-inclusive, integrated. And that was what, uh, what I really loved. I really loved about it. Oops, can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, hear there you. we go. Sorry, there was a bit of noise in the background here, so I went on mute. Um, you know, I love the way you frame that. You, you you clearly drove a lot of value and progress at Visa. Uh, how did we get you? I think we, we maybe even pulled you out of retirement. Uh, but I'd love for you to talk a little bit about what you've seen at Eightfold, um, just so the folks who are on this uh, on the call that are net new to to understanding and learning who we are get a sense from a practitioner and a leader in the environment. You, you could have gone anywhere. Um, why why are we lucky? <laughs> Well, first of all, let me let me step back. And you just said what I created and I didn't create it. The, the team of people that I worked with created it. So um, I was fortunate enough to be a, a key part of it. But there were many people that made this all work together. And I I um, I give it to up to them, to be honest with you. Um, and to answer your your question, um, the other thing that I could be doing is is nothing, which is was really kind of fun. I did come out of retirement. I, I had the the opportunity to um, retire from Visa. It was a wonderful thing. I came up to Sonoma County, built a house, have Redwood sitting right here in the background, if you can see, um, wineries all around me. And um, but I was uh, introduced to Ashutok. Ashutosh Garg, who is our CEO and founder, uh, as a part of maybe a conversation about being on the advisory board. And after we got into some pretty deep conversation, we realized that um, this was something that at Visa we dreamt about, quite honestly, having some form of an intelligent platform that sat on top of all of the HR systems and technology to create a connectivity, but then also create a, a an intelligence that took you from the engagement through the hiring, through the, uh, you know, all the recruitment aspects of things, but then bringing them in and having that information available as a talent module as well. So um, it, it, over several months, uh, <laughs> went from being a consultant to being then part, uh, full-time as well, the head of people. So we are we are lucky and thrilled to have you. I think um, with the demo that Quinn uh, will will uh, walk us through, along with your expertise, um, you know, I think we're excited to share this. And so, without further ado, uh, Tracy, thank you so much for your time. Um, I would love for you to stay on if you can. I know you have I, 50, 50 or hundred other things uh, that are top priority for today, but we appreciate your time. And, and Quinn, I want to flip it over to you. You know, I think as we talk about virtual event recruiting in the construct of the Eightfold platform. Uh, I think it's important for, for everyone on the phone to know that this is something that um, we've built and delivered um, very specifically to meet the needs of today and to shape the needs of tomorrow. You, you know, our Eightfold platform has modules like talent management, talent acquisition, smart scheduling, talent experience, and, 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 event, and virtual event recruiting fits you know, sort of seamlessly into that, um, just broadly across the workflow. And, uh, as we focus on workflow enhancements and capabilities, Quinn would love for you to, to dive in and uh, start to share your screen. And, um, and for those of you who are, who are joining, please put any questions you may have in the chat, um, in the chat function. Uh, we will get to them at the end. Uh, we've already gotten a couple of them. And so please uh, file more questions and we'll be happy to dive in uh, shortly. So with that, Quinn. Absolutely, thank you. Can you hear me okay and see my screen all right? Yes to both. Excellent. Well, folks, my name is Quinn. I'm on the solutions engineering team here at Eightfold, and we're, we're going to be walking through uh, a day in the life when it comes to uh, an event through the Eightfold virtual event recruiting solution. But before we do that, I always think it's helpful to start not in the product, but how our product works. 
And what you're looking at here, it's much more than a, a funky screensaver. This is really a view into the eightfold skills library. And every blue dot here is a skill. And we've analyzed billions of resumes up to this point to understand the skills it takes to succeed in a certain job at a certain company at a certain time. And what's really important to understand and articulate about what you're looking at here is not just the number of blue dots that you see, but how closely, how close two dots are to each other. And that tells us about skills adjacencies and skills threading, meaning how likely can I learn a certain skill if I have another skill that's adjacent to it. So if I look at a certain skill here, I'll type in um, something along the lines of operations management as an example. We can see all of the different skills that are somewhat adjacent to operations management team building, supply chain management, logistics, PL, forecasting, et cetera. Meaning that if I have operations management as a skill, it's not too much of a leap to be able to, to learn these other skills as well. Or on the flip side, if I'm a recruiter and I'm trying to hire for somebody who needs operations management as a skill and they don't have that skill, but they have a lot of these other skills as well, can I take that leap of faith and hire that individual on potential to then teach them operations management on the job. This train, this idea of skills adjacencies really makes us industry agnostic across technology, uh, financial services, manufacturing, insurance, et cetera. What's really helpful here to understand is not only do we understand the hard skills, such as what you see here, but we can also articulate and understand the soft skills that somebody might have, their soft skills and competencies as well. So if you look at a skill such as multitasking, as an example here, right, we can see a lot of that same paradigm start to take shape. Work well independently, conscientious, team oriented, fast paced environment. And this allows eightfold customers to hire for sales positions, customer success positions, leadership roles, and not just technical roles. And this understanding of skills spans everything that we do. But I always think it, help, it helps to start here because we really are different in how we analyze and view skills. Again, it's not part of the solution at all, but it is a layer under the hood to understand how the system is working. Let's move forward to an actual event now. And in this hey, event, Hey, quick, quick yeah, question absolutely. from the audience, and I think it's salient before we jump in. Um, how do you base a human being's abilities and potential on their resume alone? And, uh, and then what advice do you give current talent on writing resumes? That's an excellent point. And we definitely take the roles that were held at certain companies into account. And that gives us a lot of this context as to what skills you might have, right? As an example, a sales rep at Eightfold knows about artificial intelligence machine learning. That does not hold for all sales reps at all companies, right? So where the company is and what they do, that adds a lot of context to the skills that you might have. We utilize this functionality here to fill in the gaps that might be in somebody's resume. So we don't believe that somebody should get a job because they're good at writing a resume. That's not the purpose of the job they're writing the resume for. So we, under, we utilize this understanding of skills adjacencies to infer the skills that somebody might have. So when it comes to eightfold, we don't really care what's on the resume from a skills perspective. We just wanna understand where you've worked, um, what roles you've held, and what your progression through those companies has been like. Now, obviously, you know that a lot of companies don't have eightfold yet, and so I will say that keeping your skills as up-to-date as possible from a LinkedIn perspective, from a resume perspective, and keeping your online presence as up-to-date as possible, that's a huge piece to be able to understand what you can do today and tomorrow and forward. And I'd like to just add really quickly on, on top of that um, around basing a human being's abilities. Because we've analyzed uh, several billion uh, data points, we understand uh, the characteristics that and I'll use an example here since we're in operations management, let's say an operations manager at FedEx, for example, what did they do that led up to their ability to become an operations manager um, at, um, uh, uh, at FedEx? And so we look at the historical set of, uh, of candidates who've ever been or, or humans who've ever been operations managers at FedEx, understanding deeply what their background skills, experiences are. 
And further, we look at where they have gone thereafter. Uh, and we use those data points um, in mass, right? And we call that, um, uh, we call that, of course, big data uh, is applied against this neural network that Quinn is demoing to understand what are the true or inferred skills or capabilities um, for an individual and predict largely what are they going to do next based on the trajectories that we have seen for profiles that are like or similar to theirs. Uh, and so, you know, tips on writing resumes uh, are something that we are hoping to obviate in the future. Um, but certainly it is a core part of our platform. And uh, I think it's a great question. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Mihir. Any other questions before we should move into the event piece of the solution? No, I think let's go forward with the with the, with the demo and we'll catch some of the other questions. There's a lot of great ones in here. You got it, absolutely. So we're gonna um, play today's uh, demonstration from the role of a company called Acme Technologies. They're holding a virtual recruiting fair in this case at the University of San Francisco. Now this is the homepage for somebody who's utilizing Eightfold to host a virtual event. Now, of course, that can be this can be used for on-site recruiting as well. In the time that we're currently in, virtual is much more top of mind, of course. Now, we're going to be going through a day in the life from both the event coordinator who's setting up this event, as well as the candidate as well, and see what their experience looks like when uh, interacting with an eightfold powered event. So first and foremost, of course, you need the skeleton of what's going to be going on with the event as well. Um, you know, this is the first step in setting up this event, right? When, when it's gonna be, is it virtual um, or is it on site? What's the description of what's gonna be going on from an event perspective? In this example, we wanna get people excited about working at Acme Technology. So we're starting with a CEO kickoff, um, then maybe a video about working at Acme from a culture perspective, sales, product deep dive, you know, really get a lot of excitement. Uh, all the things that you can think to that oftentimes happen at an on-site event, we're going to incorporate those things into the virtual event as well. And then finally, from an afternoon, afternoon breakout perspective, talk with the Acme recruiters to see if we're a good match for you, right? And we're, we're happy to offer some best practices as well when it comes to hosting virtual events. And our talent transformation team has gotten a lot of success with providing uh, guidance on how to run these the most efficiently. Once you understand the, the skeleton, if you will, re really the backbone of what's gonna be going on with, in this event, we take you through this pre-event checklist to understand um, all the different pieces that are important to setting up events. And the first piece is going to be adding those target positions. Which positions are you, are you uh, most likely trying to hire for at this event? Uh, and I can add any position that we've already calibrated within the eightfold system. OK, next piece is going to be um, uploading a, a resume book. That's an optional piece, of course, but we do allow you the ability to, if you have those books of resumes ahead of time, bulk upload, the, upload those, whether it's a CSV or a zip file or a PDF, really easy to drag and drop any of those, um, any of those pieces into the screen here, right? And I can just select that file and drag and drop it. Okay, really easy to do that. Upload the resume, it could be a bolt, could be one off and upload that. And it's really, really quick. Okay, the next, and the, the beauty about that is we're gonna be inviting all these individuals to register for this event. And we'll jump into the invitees, the registrants, the assessments. We'll jump into that in a little bit. The next piece after the people are uploaded, those resume books have been pushed into Eightfold, is creating the assessment form. What kinds of questions do you want the recruiter or whoever is assessing these candidates? What questions do you want them to be able to ask and, and, and answer of the candidate on a candidate by candidate basis. Now these are configurable, of course, by event, and you can choose to ask other questions, have more radio buttons or, or drop downs, however you want to give some quick and easy access to assessing these candidates. Now, Tracy was talking about how she would simply star a resume and then throw it aside. This really is the new age AI based version of that. Based on how these questions are answered, uh, a candidate will be put into the pipeline for one or multiple positions. And then finally create that landing page, right? What do we want the, the registrants to see 
when they access and want to register for this event. So in this case, it's a it's an Acme Technologies virtual recruiting fair. We saw already the about and what this what this is going to entail, and then the dates and even the jobs that we're hiring for as well. And we can view all these as well. And then finally, people you may work with, um, people that are are somewhat associated with you as well. And I do encourage you, actually, uh, if you've got your phones out right now, you know, this is much more of, of an on-site use case, but this can be applicable for the virtual side as well. If I have not yet registered for the event, take out my phone, take a picture of this QR code that takes me directly to the registration page for this event. And if you want to register for this event now, you definitely can, right? Just drag and drop that resume or, or access it from, from elsewhere. And the idea from an on-site event perspective, you know, have this QR code on t-shirts, on posters. So if somebody's at an on-site event and they come by your booth but hasn't, haven't registered yet, it takes a matter of four or five clicks to be able to do so. Now, the idea is whether it's through the QR code or simply the URL to this registration link, this can be embedded as a URL on LinkedIn, on you know, social media as well to allow people to register for these events uh, via um, their desktop as well. For a, a, a recruiting event specific to a college like this is today, like the University of San Francisco, we could even send this URL off to the campus, uh, to the campus career fair, uh, uh, career um, uh, the, the department of, excuse me, that's uh, escaping me, but send it to the university as well to be able to dist distribute to those students, right? So a lot of different avenues to be able to get individuals to register for these events. And then finally, the actual campaigns themselves. And this is where we utilize eightfold standard campaigns functionality to create the registration campaign, create the follow-up as well, make sure people are actually registering for the event, Finally, on the reminder campaign at the bottom here, this is where the actual Zoom or Hangouts or whichever um, whichever software you're utilizing to host the virtual event, that's when you'd send out the actual registration information so people can actually jump on the computer and have the event itself. And we'll talk about all this um, from the Canvas perspective as well, but just to look at the, at the checklist here, once the event happens, we wanna make sure that we follow up with those candidates if they're not a good fit today, thank you. Thank them for their time. And for those that are a good fit, engage those applicants, those can those candidates who could be applicants, and encourage them to apply for a position on your careers page. So we're going to jump now into the candidates view and see what they see when they receive these emails for this virtual event. Okay. Actually, and before we dive into that, uh, for those of y'all on the on the on the call. Uh, we we developed large parts of this product in concert uh, with with Nutanix, and I thought they had an interesting best practice of uploading older resume books from a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and reaching out to those sets of, of candidates, uh, saying, "Hey, we know you're two years out of college. We met back when we came to campus. We're still hiring. If you're looking for a new role, we'd love to talk to you. Your profile looks fantastic." And so, you know, there were a couple of questions here about best practices. Um, I just want to pepper in something that one of our one of our existing clients is currently doing um, in terms of utilizing this type of technology for the longitudinal relationship of folks they've met in the past. Um, so, Quinn, before you you moved on to the candidate experience, I wanted to to just drop that in. Awesome. Thanks for here. Thanks for looking at that chat. So, jumping into the candidate's perspective, right? Candidate gets an email from Acme saying, um, that's actually the wrong one here, um, saying you're invited to this event, right? This can be look, this can look however you, you choose it to look. Um, here's a high level agenda of what you can expect. Here's the date and time. And I can really easily reserve a spot for that event by clicking that link. That pushes me into this registration page, right? Again, what, what this is all about, the jobs that we're hiring for, this is the desktop version of what you would have accessed if you would have taken that picture of the QR code from your phone. Okay, really easy for the register and registrant to register for the event, right? Drag and drop the resume onto the screen. And in a couple of seconds, the system has pulled the information out of the resume. I answer, I fill in my phone number if it's not in there already, and I click next. 
And with four clicks, I've registered for the event. Not only that, but myself as the candidate, Bobby, I see right now all the jobs that I'm a strong match for that you are hiring for. So these positions down right here, I'm already getting automatic feedback from the artificial intelligence saying not only, you know, thank you for registering for this event, you're a strong match for these four positions, giving Bobby even more of a reason to attend this event because he knows I'm a good fit for these roles. You know, Quinn, I want, I want to pause there for just a second. I, I think uh, this can't be underscored enough. Uh, when we talk about generating excitement uh, and the preparation that goes into uh, creating a success successful event recruiting event, uh, one of the things is ensuring that those who attend are not just interested in the company, but maybe have the next level of detail around why they should be interested in the company. And, you know, for someone with like Bobby's background, I know you flip through it pretty quickly. And I know the screen is blurry in some uh, of the attendees' um, uh, screens. Certainly, it makes sense a senior data scientist or data analyst or data scientist, but the data and analytics engineer. You know, it's not clear to me that based on his background and resume that he would have self selected and self assessed into being a strong match for that type of role. And as we all know, especially those of us who work at large matrix cross functional organizations, uh, the naming of title, uh, naming and title of positions can often be a bit tricky for candidates who don't know our business as well as we do. Uh, and so opening their eyes to the opportunities and helping guide them through the initial stages of the process, ensure at least for, for candidates like Bobby, that they have visibility into leveling and types of positions that they could be a great fit for. And so now that enables Bobby to have a different type of dialogue and conversation with the recruiter. The recruiter also on the other end has this view into Bobby. Um, so that they understand that Bobby is not just a great fit for uh, a senior data analyst, uh, but potentially data analytics engineer, uh, and can help steer the conversation for those types of positions. And so I want to underscore this, um, this capability because it breaks down the asymmetry of information, which that opaqueness of asymmetry often drives a longer discovery cycle. Uh, and as we know, in the, in, in the pace of an environment of hiring where we're, where we're fighting for talent, we need to move very quickly and, and coming to that understanding is, is incredibly important. So I wanted to underscore that um, as, a, a, as part of the functionality of, of event recruiting. Awesome, Th thanks Mihir. And really when once the individual registers for the event, right, that's where the candidates pop in here and we can see all the individuals that we've registered for the event. I can see a couple of individuals have registered for this event as well, awesome guys, thank you. Um, but from a registration perspective, right, once you register, the system is actually suggesting positions that this person is a good fit for. And I can see that Bobby is a five-star match in this example for the senior data scientist position. But as I scroll through here, you know, I'm seeing a lot of five-star matches, some four and a half star matches, some four-star matches, just by the system saying, based on the, the, the individual who've registered, they're probably a good fit for, for position X. And if I'm playing the role of an event coordinator here or a recruiter, and I see that Bobby got, um, he registered and he's a five-star match for this data scientist position. I can even schedule an interview with him right now before the event even started, right? If I go to Bobby's profile really quickly here, and I can see that I can schedule an event with him, right? Right from his profile. And when I do so, Right, the system is telling me which positions that Bobby is going to be a good fit for, right? And I can even um, associate him with a certain position. That was just a suggestion for the senior data analyst position, um, but I can even like put him in the actual pipeline right away. And when I do that, maybe I want to send him an, an actual fall, uh, uh, an interview specific to the recruiting event, right? And when I do so, this is utilizing eightfold standard scheduling technology, whether we're scheduling for the event right now or just through the standard talent acquisition experience. Every, every individual who interviews people, they've got their, their Outlook or their Gmail calendar integrated with eightfold. And so I can see right away all the different times that I'm available to meet with Bobby. Now I can, I can look at suggested times based off of my calendar. I can set a specific time. Or even what I think is the best user experience, let the candidate choose. Let Bobby understand when we should be meeting. And so we can, we've can we got this uh, email 
template specific to the event itself, right? We would like to schedule an event with you prior to the event because you are a potential great match for quite a few roles here. Send that off. And now Bobby gets an email that he's actually been, he's a great fit for a lot of roles. And before the event even happens, he's now getting an interview, right? Only with a matter of clicks because of eightfold understanding that he's a five-star match for that role, right? And so when I go back here, give it a quick refresh, we can see that Bobby's getting that, that, um, that email from the system. And he can really easily click that link and schedule an interview for himself. Okay, Gmail's loading slowly for now, but just keep in mind, really easy for Bobby to click a link from the email and then schedule a time for him to meet in a matter of clicks. And so right away, right, we haven't even had the event yet, but we're already setting up interviews for the highly qualified individuals based on those who have registered. We can also see who were assessed for certain positions. Um, and we talked about the assessment form and answering a couple of questions as we interv interview those individuals. OK. Here we go here, fi finally loaded up. But just giving Bobby a really easy way to say, OK, great. I can now find some some times that work for me. And so playing the role as the can of the candidate really quickly, I'm seeing every availability piece um, where Quinn Adler, the interviewer, is also available. So today he's got some time. Monday he's got some time. Let me set up something up for 10 o'clock for him and continue. And in just three clicks, the candidate has scheduled an interview um, with the recruiter. Very easy to do that from, um, from a candidate's perspective. Okay. And then from from a campaign's perspective, right? We talked about the invite. We, we want to also allow them, if they haven't registered, remind them to do so. Give them those nudges to be able to um, get all the registrants as possible um, before the event occurs. And then finally, when, a couple of days before that event, send out the Zoom link with all the relevant information um, related to the event itself. And then the event actually happens. And I want to turn it quickly back over to Tracy um, just to discuss what this would look like from a virtual events perspective. Thanks, Quinn. Um, so when we thought through this, um, one of the things that was in my mind is that there are, um, you know, you're trying to replicate something that happened in on site somewhere. So you have basically in my mind two swim lanes. One is the swim lane about what we talked about earlier, uh, giving the company an opportunity to show who they are, sell the company. And so part of what we've incorporated into this is you as a, a hiring entity can create a program that that highlights the company. You can have, as we've put in here, a CEO kickoff call. You know, it could be 15, 10 minutes. They could be short vignettes. But it gives the um, opportunity to create a an event versus just a candidate interface uh, in the interviewing piece. So the, the second swim lane is obviously the ability to engage with the candidates before during and after the event, which is, is critical. I mean, that's what you want. But also, it gives you the ability to schedule time where people can pop into these, um, you know, separate events, uh, webinars, or, or just talks, and get to know the company a little bit better. So that was the intent in, in this role. Awesome. Thanks, Tracy. And so that's really what the event encompasses, right? Those two different swim lanes we talked about, getting excitement with the company itself, with Acme, the CEO kickoff, what culture is like at the company. If you want to be in sales, can you be a rock star in our sales organization or on the product side, right? More of a deep dive with a chief product officer or something along those lines. These are just examples. Um, but again, we can offer best practice to those who want some guidance as to lead the best virtual events possible. And so the event happens, right? We talked, Tracy talked about those multiple swim, multiple swim lanes. We got a lot of excitement. Now we want to go through those post event checklists to follow up with those candidates who might be a good fit and even save them into a pipeline for one or multiple positions. And for those that are not a good fit today, you know, thank you for your time. And maybe at some point we'll reach out because we have your data on file. If something that 
if something pops up that you are a good fit for. And so jumping back into the, the inbox of the individuals here, thank you for your time for this event um, at the event, right? We wanna also give you the ability to apply for these positions with one click of a button. And so clicking that button pushes the individual into talent experience. This is an eightfold powered careers page, which tells the candidate all the jobs they should be applying for and why, right? And this really takes the, the AI piece to the next level. So, you know, the, the event happens, the candidate says, great, you know, I, I had a great time at the Acme virtual recruiting fair. I got a campaign email from them again. I clicked the link. I just pushed here and I can see all the open jobs that I'm a strong match for. And not only that, but on the right hand side, we can see data specific to me as in recent grad, as a candidate. I'm in the top 15%. I, you know, I've got the years of experience you're looking for. And here's some of the skills that I've got that you're looking for for this role. I can see I'm a, I'm a strong match for some roles, a good match for others. And this is just more of the entire eightfold platform seamlessly integrating together. And so the, the individual can quickly apply for that position through the eightfold powered careers page. Jumping back. Here. Our, Quinn, we lost you. For, we lost your uh, your uh, your mic for just a second. Can you can you try talking again? Lost your mic. All right. There we go, you're back, I think. Or is that Tracy? That was me. I was oh, gonna okay. say, we might need to bring it home here. Yeah, I think so. Um, Quinn, I think, thank you, we'll, we'll move to, there's been a really robust set of questions asked um, in the chat, and so I would love to flip over to that. Um, so Quinn, thank you for, for giving us the walkthrough. Um, I will, uh, you could, <laughs> Sorry about that, Quinn. I think we got probably 95% of the way through. Um, there is a little bit more functionality we'd love to show you, uh, but I would love to spend some time on the Q&A. And, um, and, uh, and Tracy, I'm going to actually look to you to answer a few of these questions because um, they're right up your alley. Um, but let me, let me take them in, um, in order that, uh, that we received them. Uh, can we host our own event with this platform or just be a part of others' events? Um, you can absolutely host your own event. Hopefully the demo gave you a great sense of um, not just hosting an event, but the pre-work, the fast tracking of candidates, and then also the follow-ups afterwards. Um, is your product currently used at any school systems? Uh, in fact, most of our clients do use, um, use our products for campus recruiting uh, and actually use it for all kinds of event recruiting. So, you know, when, um, when Tracy talked about Grace Hopper, for example, uh, one of our clients, Adroll, I'm sorry, next role. Um, back then, they were Adderall Group. Um, used us for Grace Hopper to to a pretty tremendous um, set of results. And so, yes, it's absolutely um, integratable with uh, with several of the uh, campus recruiting capabilities. Whether it's virtual or, or I mean, in, in the case of Grace Hopper, obviously that's a, an on-site event. So we have a just you can use the event recruiting functionality in that environment, uh, whether you're on site but now we're in a different world. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, Tracy, there's a question that just came in. Um, looks and sounds amazing, but wondering if it's cost effective for small to medium sized firms. Can you talk a little bit about how smaller firms would use platforms like this? Well, I think that, um, you know, the, the, it, only you can make the, the evaluation if it's cost effective for you, but there is a tremendous amount of cost associated with putting a team together whether it's to travel to these different or, uh, places, the and like I said, the money that you spend on a booth and, and different things, um, you know, we are right now in a place where you, if you want to hold any kind of a, an event, 
you have to do it virtually. You don't have an option. So I think weighing um, those different aspects um, might make it uh, right for you. I, I would say that it could be right for, for any kind of organization overall. Great. Um, a couple of questions that came in around pricing and subscription. Let me describe a little bit uh, about our philosophy on this. Um, this is an annual subscription product from Eightfold. Uh, you can host unlimited number of events uh, and drive unlimited number of events against it. So we don't charge up on a per event basis. Um, and, uh, and so the annual subscription is something that certainly um, I'm happy to talk to you about um, offline. Uh, a couple questions about sending, emailing your pricing and so on and so forth. Feel free to email me. Uh, my name, my email address is Mahir. That's M-I-H-I-R at eightfold.ai. Uh, that's again M-I-H-I-R at eightfold.ai, and I'm happy to um, uh, to have conversations around. Excuse me, what that pricing looks like in the construct of um, of the, the the eightfold platform and the other modules that we have. Um, uh, Tracy, while the market is so dynamic, do companies have time to relax and experiment on skills? and check if the candidate they're hiring will be a top performer. Uh, do companies have time and money to invest? Well, um, I would say some yes and some no. Um, there, um, I think that if you have the time to invest in, in creating a, a, a greater focus on skills-based um, hiring and, and how you approach that, Perfect. Right now, the market seems to be divided into two categories. One, which is companies that are are downsizing, furloughing, um, doing whatever they can to protect their the baseline, and then there are other companies who are trying to ramp up as fast as they possibly can. And so, the companies who are ramping up as fast as they pop possibly can can use this to actually simplify. The, the hiring process in a, in a major, major way. So they can take advantage of this, but the people who are not can use this time to actually fine tune what they're doing. So either way. Outstanding, thank you. Um, does the APOL platform integrate with different ATSs and talent CRMs? Um, yes, absolutely, uh, that's our bread and butter. So whether it's success factors, uh, job vite, workday, uh, Paleo, uh, Greenhouse, Lever, you name it, um, we've, uh, we've integrated. Uh, you can actually get a list of, uh, of a lot of the ATSs that we've integrated with um, uh, on our website. Also, um, you, know, you should please uh, feel free to request a personal demo, personalized demo on our website. Um, as you go to eightfold.ai, uh, one of our banner screens, in fact, our home banner screen is about virtual event recruiting. Super easy to Great. request a demo there. Um, and, uh, and if you really want Quinn, uh, you can personally request Quinn, uh, <laughs> have him jump on. Um, and after, yes, we will, we'll be in touch with you shortly. Um, my voice went in and out. Uh, it's Mihir at eightfold.ai, M-I-H-I-R at E-I-G-H-T-F-O-L-D dot A-I. Um, regarding security of personal information, what is the time frame for this information being held? Um, that's a great question. It's a GDPR uh, question and, uh, and a privacy question. Uh, we are fully GDPR and SOC 2 compliant. Um, we have a bunch of information on our career site or on our website around, um, around security. It is um, one of our top priorities. You know, of course, we want to serve, uh, we, we want to serve our clients as well as we can, but we also want to make sure we are protecting our clients. And so um, that has been at the core of our, of our models and our capabilities and platform. Um, and with that, uh, you know, we're getting to the last minute or so. Um, Tracy, I want to maybe close with one last question for you, um, and uh, and you can bring us home uh, <laughs> on this. Um, but uh, you know, as you think about um, you know the future of, of event recruiting, just the future of event recruiting, could you close us out on on how you would how you would think about Eightfold in, in that platform? Um, well, I think that uh, I think that we're here. Number one, um, I think that once you've you've uh, created the opportunity to do this virtually, um, I think that that the landscape might change going forward. To be honest with you, we might be seeing um, this as a new norm going forward. So, um, being able to have the advantage of uh, a platform that actually integrates into your ATS 
into um, you know the the ability to not only create the event, participate, and then um, uh, have the the candidate uh, traction going forward. It's huge. It's it's a big deal in my mind, and it's one that I think every company needs to seriously evaluate going forward. Yeah, you know, as we enter this this sort of new paradigm, we have um, you know a bit of a luxury, if I may of testing and trying new mm -hmm. capabilities that are maybe outside of our organization's historical way of operating. Uh, you know, we at Eightfold would ha love to be a part of your story um, and help support you in your talent acquisition and talent management needs um, and, and uh, initiatives. So thank you for taking the time with us here today. Tracy, thank you for being on with us. Quinn, thank you for battling through all of the, uh, <laughs> all the technical issues. Uh, we deeply appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to, to hosting you guys on a webinar again really soon. Um, and to those on the line, thank you again for your time. Uh, best of luck. Please stay safe. Um, yeah. Thoughts and prayers are with you and your loved ones. Have a great day. Bye.